Hello everyone. Welcome to Miss Mama Reads. In this podcast is where I read my own homemade short stories. These stories can vary from little romantic comedy or based on true life to full on series of fantasy or science fiction. Mind you that most of these stories are not written for a younger audience and parental guidance is advised for children under the age of 13. This story is called The Silver Cloak. She had walked these woods many times, but now she found herself stumbling through the unknown part of the forest. It was winter. The air was cold and dry. Snow and ice covered everything. She saw the brown leaves almost white with frost, which were breaking under her feet. She almost did not feel her feet now. They felt like they were frozen to the bone. She went on, watching the sun behind the trees sink lower and lower. There was no place she recognized, and the sun was too low to go on. There was a small open space and she started to build a fire. Frozen sticks were put strategically against each other. She warmed a dryer stick and used her electric lighter to make it burn. She also had gathered an amount of dry pine needles and soon there was a very small fire going. While the sky was getting dark, she gathered more wood from around the area. She saw a family of foxes scatter by, too far away to investigate the situation further. She had food anyway. When it became too dark to venture out, she sat near the fire and unpacked her backpack. She had a simple but sharp knife, a crimson cloak, a flask with water, some individually packed sandwiches, and a solar charger. She repacked everything but one of the sandwiches. The fire was burning bright and provided a nice warmth. The aluminium foil teared away, making a scrunching sound when she unpacked the bread. The bread was thick. In between the slices there was a big slice of ham, butter and some lettuce. She looked up into the sky, where stars were appearing. Darkness holds no solace when far from home, she said. But home is there where God shines her light. Take care of me, Omnia. She held her breath for ten counts before she began eating. The sandwich was done too quickly, but she did not want to risk eating more. The crimson cloak was unpacked again and she draped it over her. Feeding wood to the fire every now and then, she tried to plan a way to get back home. She opened her eyes. Day was dawning. The fire was still going, but it was not her who had kept it fed. A figure sat next to her, throwing a stick on the low fire. His eyes were yellow his ears pointy. His skin was a bluish black like his hair. He wore a big dark green coat. His legs stuck out of brown short pants. He had no shoes. When she moved he looked at her sideways. You are a deep sleeper, he said matter-of-factly. He poked in the fire. She kept quiet, but sat up. She put her cloak closer around her. Oh, no need for that, he said with a sly smile. I see no reason to hurt you. He cocked his head. 
His eyes were looking directly into her soft brown eyes. She still held on to the cloak. He let his head flop to one side, looking curiously at her. You still believe in the big bad wolf? The fairy tale of Red Riding Hood? She was real! She shouted suddenly. Her outburst surprised even her. She stood up, keeping the cloak on her body. She managed to pick up the backpack too. He stood up as well. Don't be foolish, he whispered. There are way more wicked beings in these woods. And that cloak does not deter all of them. She did not listen. She had tied the ends of the cloak together around her neck and put the backpack on her front. The backpack was patterned with pictures of Wolfsbane. He growled. She was tired, running from the wolf for so long. Her crimson cloak dragged behind her, and it was torn by the frozen thorns. Almost snagged dregs. What was left of the cloak, she pulled closer to her body. The day was almost over again, but she could not forage for wood now. She was not able to build a fire. I have to move along. She thought, if I keep going straight, I am bound to get out of this nightmare. She had been walking for a while now, too tired to run. Luckily for her, she had acquired a phone case with some extra features, and one of them was a simple but working compass that was worked into one of the corners. She managed to keep a steady pace leading to the west. The trees were further apart here. The low light still reached the forest floor. Suddenly, she heard laughing. I pity you, maiden, for your father. It was the voice of the yellow-eyed man. To venture in these woods alone, Mercy does not live in the hollow. He laughed again. She hurried along. In the low light, she saw the dark outlines of the first houses. Smoke was coming out of the chimneys. It was still far away. She pulled at her cloak and was at all her strength she had left to run to the buildings. The sun was already set. The sky was turning a cold blue. She reached the first house and started ringing the bell and knocking furiously. No reaction from anyone. Someone had to be inside. There was smoke coming out of the chimney. Help! She yelled. Help me! No answer. No compassion from the stones. She heard from behind her ear. The yellow-eyed man was behind her. He grabbed her shoulder where the cloak was torn to shreds and put his other hand over her mouth. She noticed too late the hand held the soggy hand towel. Ether. Her vision got blurry while she struggled to get free. Your fear brings tears like summer rain. He chuckled, holding her down. Much needed in these cold, somber winter days. Cry, little red, cry. Your tears are like begging. They beg for me to ease your pain. Her world went black. When she woke up, she was in bed. It was a strange bed, with rough feeling blankets. Everything smelled like wet dog. It was warm in the bed, though. Oh, mother, father, she thought, where am I? She wanted to get out of bed, but her limbs felt heavy. I should not have tried it. I was not ready. I am cast adrift and Omnia is punishing me. What should I do? A stream of tears started to flow down her cheeks. 
And so was the girl killed by the hellish wolf. A voice cut out loudly. She turned her head, tears still streaming from her eyes. There is the begging again. The yellow-eyed man sat on a chair close to the bed. He had a book in his hand. The book was bound in red leather. The few words she could see were shining, probably written in gold ink. He himself changed clothes. The big coat and short pants were exchanged for a green shirt and grey woolen trousers. He still did not wear any shoes. Your eyes betray confusion. He said, You are thinking, am I a friend or a fiend? She did not answer him. Slowly, her limbs were reacting to her commands again. Although you probably think I am your enemy anyway. He continued. He flipped a few pages and started to read. Pardon me for this intrusion. I will show you what I mean. I have come to claim a heart from thee. He looked up. A passage from our version. He started reading again. My own is not for thee. It is broken. Can't you see? But I can offer a heart anew. As the flower screamed in the silence, he shook his maimed face. A heart broken can be mended, and I do not mind to use my healing lips. All I want to have in return is your promise that your final kiss belongs to me. He looked her right in her eyes. He did not break the gaze for a full minute, even moving his head when she did. Then he said, your scarlet kiss will set me free. With a loud slap, he closed the book. His hand on the book, he leaned backwards. How different is your version from ours? We have seen your version, demonizing us, dooming us. While all he wanted was her love. He spat beside him in the fireplace. She moved uncomfortable. Her limbs were moving as she wanted, but there were prickles in her arms. She felt weak. So tell me, daughter of Red, he said while standing up. Why did you come to our part of the woods? It was silent in the room for a moment. She cleared her throat. <clears throat> Omnia, she said. I want to find her throne. He laughed. You want to find a drowned sea? Do you even know where to look? Our version has a poem that hints where the throne is located, she said. She felt annoyed, not afraid for a moment. He had not heard her. But yes, he used either to knock her out and bring her here. But for Canaris, he did not do anything her parents warned her for. She sat up, her feet on the floor. She cleared her throat again. My love, I beseech thee, throw thy cloak aside to feed me. Crimson rivers from your veins, these crimson rivers feel no pain. Wandering alone, away from home, walk through the forest of the damned, and the throne is drowned in the land. Let the soul sink like a stone, until you are lost and alone. Find my seat at my wedding bed. His laugh was gone. I don't know that poem. He replied. Why would you? She asked bitterly. This happened after she put away her red cloak 
and was tricked into wearing the silver one. Tricked? She stole that cloak from Lumor. Lumor tricked Omnia and told her the silver cloak would stop the war. The moment she had the silver on her shoulder, she was cursed. Her red hair became poisonous and dangerous like snakes. Her right hand became dark red, reducing her followers to flames. Her lover and her daughter had to fight her and kill her to save the rest from doom, but all descendants were cursed anyway. She fell silent for a while. Her throat was dry. She swallowed. Omnia is all we can think about. Her former warm blood is beckoning us. It calls us. It demands we slay our sons and feed our lover's wolf's bane. Finding her throne and giving the sacrifice will stop all this. What kind of sacrifice? He asked. She shrugged. The story says her blood would tell what I need to sacrifice. I did not get anything when I started the journey. Playing the obedient daughter, I see. He chuckled again. However, she noticed that he was taken aback by the story. She put weight on her feet and stood up. It is my decision. I want to stop this. He scratched his chin while he was thinking. She noticed now she was standing, she had her clothes still on, except her shoes. She tried walking. Her legs were still a bit weak, but they could hold her. He looked at her with a small smile. Okay. He said. I think I can lead you to it. To what? I can bring you to the drowned seat. It was a strange situation. A daughter of the Red Cloak, who was willingly following a canaris. A pale moon was shining through the trees. They walked in a steady pace, the woods were closing in again. A frozen river was nearby, and their eyes gleamed in the moonlight. The only reason she had this amount of trust in him was because she felt a pull in her right hand that was getting stronger the longer they walked. It took them two more hours to reach the river. She was cold but determined. The stars looked different. Was she really this far away from home? Here it is, he said. The drowned seat is right there. He pointed at the sharp piece of stone that was stuck in the ground. Everything was covered in a thick layer of snow, but there were distinctive shapes. Pieces of stone that signified the ruins of a hall, broken off ornaments hiding under white. Her right hand was itching. She looked around. In the pale moonlight, she saw scratches and bumps. Her hand was turning red. Here was where Luma reigned. Where we had a home. And before Omnia damned this place. He gestured at the ruins. Our people were at peace here. We had no quarrel. Now we are hunted and feared. When we have to fear the world in return. He snarled. Suddenly, he felt a hand on his shoulder and something was making a scrunching sound. She had taken the aluminium foil from her former sandwich and made it as flat as possible before she tried to wrap it around him. A sly smile on her face. Take this as your silver cloak. She said. He turned, looking at the scrunched up corners that hung around his shoulders. Then he smiled. I'll take. He said. 
She was spread on the floor, cold as marble. His mouth was dripping with blood. His yellow eyes narrowed while he sped out the droplets that were touching his lips. As the prediction foretold us, he said, so it will be. Now your form lies wreathed in ruby red, a scarlet halo round your head. Now the home is safe again. Because the red hand has brought us our silver cloak. Okay, this story was based on the song Wolf Song by Omnia, as you might have thought it. If you know the song, you know the lyrics that were used in this story. Uh, I got this song from a good friend and I really like the lyrics. Um, so by coincidence, uh, this is not a werewolf story, I don't want to make it all about werewolves or high fantasy. Uh, next one will not be about wolves. My friend Benjamin, also known as Snubby Struggles, was voicing this male voice. I like to use um, my friend's voices, usually the male voices, to have the male characters because, as you know, my voice is not really meant to do the male voices. Uh, and I really like this contribution. Thank you, Snubby Struggles. Uh, Benjamin, if you like his voice, by the way, and you want to follow him on Instagram or you want to hire his voice on Casting Call Club, you can find the links in the description in this episode. I do like to use songs as inspiration for short stories and if you have a good inspirational song or idea you can message me um, on the platform or on anchor.fm uh, where you can uh, basically the origin of Miss Mama Reads. Uh, well, thank you for listening, and I will be back next week with a new story. Have a great week. <laughs>